Alright, welcome back to another bike build video. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to assemble the chubby beach cruiser bike. Right, the first step we're going to do is open the top of the box and we'll pull out any of the parts that we find immediately inside the top of the box. Okay, now the two items you want to locate when you've got the top of the box open are the seat for your chubby bike and also this pack containing your toolkit and charger. We'll go through the contents of this one now. Okay, so we'll unzip the case here. We'll look inside the top, kick off. We've got owner's manual and an Ampro sticker there. You'll find your pedal set, so put this aside for when we reach that step of the build. You'll also have this headset cap here. Put that aside, we will be showing you how to use that. And the other thing you wanna pull out of here straight away is also your tool kit. We'll be using that to build the bike. Just to go through the other contents of this pack, we've got a handy little tire pump there. You'll also find your charger for the bike. Now when charging your bike for the first time, just be sure to plug the charger into the battery first before plugging it into the wall socket. We've also got a few bags of some spare bolts and screws, as well as this is a little cap that can go on the front of the headset tube of your bike. But we'll put all of these aside for now and we'll continue with the build. All right, now that we've got those first two components out of the box, I'm gonna make it easier to access the bike to build it. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is use a knife to cut up this corner of the box, as well as the opposite side. That'll allow me to fold the box down flat and get to the entire bike. Okay, now that we've cut down the sides of the box, we've got that all laying flat on the ground and I can access the entire bike. The first step we're gonna do is to remove the front wheel, which also has the front fender and the quick release axle from the rest of the bike. Once we've removed this front wheel and fender, we can get it installed in the forks and that'll allow us to put the kickstand down to complete the rest of the bike. Okay, now that I've gotten the front wheel off of the bike, I've actually flipped the bike upside down. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to put the axle into the forks. I've got the quick release axle fed in from the side with the disc rotor and one of the springs and the nut on the opposite side. Just gently, I'm gonna lower this into the fork and make sure that the brake disc goes inside the caliper. Once I've done that, I can then tighten the nut on the opposite side. And once it's nice and firm, we'll lock that quick release down into place. So now that we've got the front wheel on, I can put the kickstand down to complete the rest of the build. So the next step will be to remove all the packaging off the bike. I'll get rid of the box and I'll tidy things up and we'll continue the build. Right now, as you can see, we've got the bike completely out of the box. I've got all of the packaging removed. When you were removing the package, there's two pieces you would have found attached to the bike frame, and that is the stem for mounting your handlebars, as well as the seat pole. Now, we'll put these ones aside for now, and we'll grab those when we get to those steps. Okay, now the next step in our build is to attach the stem, which will then mount the handlebars. From before, I'll get this headset cap that we had, as well as this stem piece. It will have this cap on the bottom. You can just remove that and get rid of it for now. Now to insert the stem, we first of all put the headset cap down in place there, and then I will insert the stem. It is an adjustable height, so you can sort of gauge whereabouts you would like it. Once it's kind of in place, remove the rubber cap, and then I'm just only gonna lightly tighten this Allen key down in here. Don't wanna completely tighten it up because we can adjust that later. Now the next step is to take our handlebars and I'm gonna mount them up into the top of the stem here. So to get started, we'll remove these two bolts. Take those and the head cap off and then get your handlebars and just basically position them where you would want them. Put the top cap back into place and put the two bolts back in. Now again, I'm not gonna completely tighten these down just yet. I'm just gonna get them in there and I'm gonna adjust them one by one because we don't want one of them being tightened down more than the other. We want them to be tightened down evenly. Now once you're happy that your handlebars are in the center as well as at the right angle that you like, feel free one by one to tighten those two bolts down. Now that we have our handlebars in place, the next step that I'm gonna do is to make sure all of our brake levers, gear shifters, as well as your display are all in the position that we want them and then we'll tighten those down as well.
Okay, so now that I've got the handlebars installed, I've also got all my brake levers and everything else positioned exactly how I like them on the handlebar. The next step is I'm gonna make sure that the handlebar and the front wheel are straight. So that's why before I didn't tighten this stem bolt all the way down. So we'll remove that rubber cap again. Just gently loosen that one off. And what I'm gonna do is just visually make sure that the stem goes straight through the middle of the front tire here and then it's nice and straight. Once I'm happy with that, I can then go ahead and properly tighten down the stem bolt. Once we've got that tightened down, I'll then put the cap back into place and your wheel should be nice and straight. Now the next step that we're gonna do is to install our front fender along with the headlight, which is already installed, but we'll need to take that off to fasten the fender on. Now your front fender will have come with this zip tie holding these parts together. To get it into place, best to leave that in and we can always cut it once it's lined up. But essentially what we're gonna do is we just position it on top of the wheel and just roll the wheel backwards and we'll put that into place. Now once the fender is where we want it, we'll just get these cutters, reach underneath and just snip that zip tie off. Now to properly install the front fender, I'm gonna have to take this bolt out here which is holding the front headlight on. So I'll do that first, we'll line up the fender and we'll tighten that bolt down. Now with the headlight removed, so the bracket of the fender goes up against the bike fork. Then next is the light. And then I'll put the washer and the nut on the back and we'll tighten those up in position. Now before you completely tighten that bolt down, what we wanna do is attach these two brackets for the fender. Now once we've got those two brackets are attached at the bottom of the fork, we can now lift up the front of the fender here and then tighten this piece down correctly. While you're doing this, just make sure that your headlight is also positioned upright and pointing forward. All right, so once we've got the front fender is fully installed, headlight is tightened down, just to make things neat, what I like to do is gather the wiring there and just wrap a zip tie around the stem. And that will just keep everything nice and neat. Now that you've assembled the front end of the bike, you will have noticed that you've got these four mounting points here on the front of the head tube. Now this is something new for 2023 model bikes and going forward. So you will have noticed in your toolkit, you would have gotten this plate here. This is designed to mount on the front and then allows you to attach the surf racks as well as we've got other accessories in the pipeline such as front baskets. All right, now that we've got the fender and the front headlight are fully installed and the wheel is straight, the next thing we're gonna do is check the screws that are mounted to the front brake rotor and we're gonna check them to make sure that they're tight. To do that, we use a T25 Torx bit. Okay, they were all nice and tight. Now, just as I suspected, all of those screws were already nice and tight, but it is always a good idea to check these things to make sure that they are. All right, now the next step that we're gonna do is to adjust the front brake caliper. Now to adjust the front brake caliper, I'm gonna loosen off this bolt and this bolt here. Once I've loosened them off, I'll pull on the brake lever, then while holding the brake lever, I'll tighten them back down again. All right, now I've got those two bolts loosened, I'm actually gonna pull on the brake lever and tighten them down while holding the lever. All right, now the next step is we're gonna install our seat. So we'll take our seat and our seat pole that we had before. Now, when you first look at your seat pole, you'll notice you've got an Allen bolt here. This needs to go towards the back of the seat. And you've got these two pieces here. Rotate one of them a 90 degree. Line them up with the two rails on the seat. Once you've got it in place, you can start to tighten this down. Now, before you completely tighten it down, you want to make sure that you have the seat on the correct angle. So on this one, I think we're going to need to rock the seat so that it's at an angle like so before tightening it down. Now, once you've got your seat mounted on the seat pole at the correct angle and it's nice and firm, undo the quick release on the seat attachment, slide it down to just the right height that you want and lock that into place. 
Okay, now the next part of the bike that we're gonna check is the crank bolt. So that's here and here. Now with the crank bolts, essentially I'm gonna use the included tool. I'm gonna tighten it down to hand tightness. If you do have access to a torque wrench, however, you may wanna use that to tighten them. Uh, the correct torque setting is 35 Newton meters. Oh, they're tight already. Oh yeah, I can't get out of that. Okay, now I've just checked the crank bolts as expected. They were already adequately tight, so I didn't need to tighten them anymore, but this is one of those things that's always better to check while you're building the bike. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna install our pedals. Uh, first thing you wanna do with your pedals is locate the stickers that tell you which one is for the left and which one is for the right. Now, the other thing you wanna keep an eye out for is the left pedal is reverse threaded. So that means it actually tightens anti-clockwise. But one rule of thumb to remember is the threading for each pedal rotates towards the front of the bike. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna to move to the back end of the bike. The first thing I wanna do is you'll notice we've got these two screws here, which need to be taken out so that our rear rack can be fastened down. And once you've got the, uh, once you get the rear rack lined up, get your screw back in and tighten that down. All right, now, just like we did on the front brake rotor, I'm also gonna go around and check that the screws are also tight on the rear brake rotor. So again, I'll need that T25 Torx bit. Okay, and just like before, the screws holding the brake rotor were nice and tight, so the next step will be to adjust the rear brake caliper. And just as before, I'm gonna hold down the brake lever and tighten those bolts back up. Okay, now there's just only a couple of steps left before this bike will be completely ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is inflate the tires. So I'll just head over there really quickly off camera and I'll inflate them to 25 PSI each tire. Okay, now we've inflated the tires, so it's 25 PSI each tire. I'm gonna show you how you can charge your battery. First step to doing this will be to remove the battery. You can plug it in while it's in the bike, but for the purposes of this video, I will show you also how to remove the battery from the bike. So the first thing what we'll do is undo the seat latch, pull your seat out. We can just put that to the side there for now. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is your keys. You will have found these attached to your cables on the top of your handlebars here. So once you've got your key, just insert it into the battery, push in and click it to the unlock position. I can then just pull the battery out and go very gently to get it out. Once you've removed the battery from the bike, you can just flip this cap to the side and that exposes the charging port. Now you can choose to charge your battery either outside of or in the bike, but when you do, just make sure that you plug the charger into the battery first before you plug it into the wall socket. Now to put your battery back in, just line it up on the rail at the back, gently lower it down, don't drop it, once it's in place, you can then click the key into either the off position or turn it into the on position, which will allow you to power the bike and take it out for your first ride. All right, so that's the complete step-by-step -step on how to assemble your chubby bike. If there's anything that you have questions about, you can leave those down in the comments below. But other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next video.